Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be editing Like the Artist, Zach Dola. That's Calibrius, Calibrius on Instagram. Go ahead and drop him a follow. He has some truly incredible photos on his page, so go ahead and check him out there. So today we're going to be trying to edit in the style of this, and I'm going to spend a long time just picking apart his photo and explaining to you why and how we make certain edits. But before we do get started, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. It's Sebastian underscore JWB, I'd really love you to go follow over there. Love talking to you guys, and that's how we got the idea for this video. Um, one of you guys mentioned it to me, and I was like, yeah, sure, let's film that video. So if you do want to suggest some videos, go ahead, follow me over there, or my brother, Matthew underscore GKB, um, and we'd love to see you over there. So we're going to be trying to upload every single day this month. We haven't been uploading last month, really, because we had exams. I don't know, we're at uni, we're both doing physics at uni. Um, so we've just been cramming for those exams. They're basically done now, so we're going to be trying to upload as much as we can this month because I really want to get back into the photography uh, stuff and on YouTube. And we're going to be doing lots of business kind of videos as well. So any ideas you've got, drop them in the comments. Now, I'm going to stop talking because you're obviously getting bored of me. So you're here to learn how to edit like this artist. Now, I'm going to go through um, a couple of his images now. So you can see he's got a very unique style. His images are very saturated. They're very... Um, unique in the way that they're all well they're all landscapes and he either takes his photos at sunset or at kind of like nighttime really. This one's a slightly different one. It's a very famous photograph that. He tends to take photos at sunset or at nighttime and that means his theme is very uniform. Uh, so today we're gonna be picking apart why and how he makes certain edits. Um, and I'm gonna be trying to give you as much detail as I can, but obviously I can only do so much in one video, which is why uh, that's what we do in our course, our editing course teaches you all of the stuff like that, why you make certain edits and how you can pick apart an artist's work and then transfer that to your own work and create your own style and theme. So if this is something you're interested in, um, the link is down below, top link in the description. You can go ahead and sign up and join our course. Um, you get to join this incredible Facebook group of incredible students. Um, now we've had so many people sign up in the last month, it's actually been incredible the amount of people who have supported uh, each other and us in just joining up, it's actually incredible. And some of the work you guys are producing is just mind blowing. Uh, so if you want the opportunity to join into this group and you want the opportunity to learn off us and others, sign up now, the link is down below, we will be closing that soon. Yes, you do get uh, all of our Lightroom presets, our overlays, brushes, Photoshop presets, Photoshop actions, and our course, and the option to get all our other courses as well. So if you want that, the link is down below, we will be closing that soon, so go ahead, if you're interested, grab it now, a massive discount. Uh, and for all of those of you who have just been triggered by me promoting our course, I'm terribly sorry, um, but let's get into today's video. Now, like I said, he has um, a very unique style and this one is a more sort of sunset photo. Now, the best thing to do with this image, we're gonna work our way through um, Lightroom, sort of like the panels in Lightroom. So first of all, he's got very dark images. He tends to make his images quite dark by adding lots of contrast. He drops his highlights, you can see here, very dark highlights at the top, the sky is very dark. Obviously he raises his shadows enough that you can see the foreground, um, but you can still see it's very dark in, um, in total. So he has a lot of contrast in his photos, kind of crushes those blacks quite a bit. Now, I did just do a practice color grade um, and I added more clarity, but I think having looked at it a bit more, he actually takes some clarity away because if you look here, it's a very soft kind of image. Also in this photo, actually quite soft. Um, it's easier to see in some of the other ones, but I'm pretty sure he takes clarity away. Um, now. One thing I wanted to mention is with these how to edit like videos that we teach you guys, you need to really think about when you're taking a photo, if you want to edit like Brandon Wolfall, for example, you want to be taking the photos in the style of Brandon Wolfall. Otherwise your edits will not look like his. The same goes for this artist as well, for Zach's. If you want to take photos like him and have edits like him, you've got to take photos like him. Uh, so this one is a great example because I don't know where you guys are from, let me know in the description, comment section, I'd love to hear. But from where I am, there's not much landscape, especially, I mean, I'm in Bristol at the moment. I don't really leave Bristol when I'm at uni, but where I live at home, there's not really much to take photos of. It's just very flat and boring. So this is a great example because what he's got is uh, two leading lines from the road getting into the center of the image. He's got, um, so it really draws your eyes into the center. Uh, it's great because I think, obviously what happened in this photo is it's just been raining all day. Then the sun came out, sunset, really great sunset, but he also had the nice water on the road, which means he's got great reflections of the sky in the road, which is actually quite unique and cool photo. Um, and then obviously he's got his own unique color grade and then the light on the back, which draws your eyes in. So great examples of what you can add to your image. You could also think about adding some foreground interest, which is really 
boost his photo. I, I, like, and he's an incredible photo anyway. I'm not like judging his art at all. He's got more followers than me. He knows what he's doing more than me probably. But um, if I were to take his photo, I'd maybe hold a leaf in front of the camera or like get the railing from the bridge in the camera, something like that. Might be quite cool. Anyway, um, the other thing he tends to do is make his blues kind of on the teal side. So it's not a teal and orange colour grade, but he does tend to add some teal into his image. Uh, he has a lot of magenta and pinks in his image, while also keeping those burnt oranges and yellows, slightly odd undertones there as well. Now, the other thing is his greens aren't particularly apparent in his photo. He doesn't have much greens in his photo. He tends to take that the green out to make it either more desaturated or more orange and brown. And I'll show you how to do that today. The other thing is, um, he doesn't overblow his highlights. Everything's still quite vibrant, but not too vibrant. Um, unlike this photo here, which is like incredibly vibrant blues, but it doesn't like scare you away, um, and the teals aren't too intense. So I'm going to try and teach you that today. Um, I hope that kind of helps a little bit more in deconstructing uh, someone's photo. So when you're editing, have a look at the photo and try and understand what he's done in the edit, and just think through the edit as you're looking at the photo. Okay, so we are going to be editing this photo today. Now, I'm sorry if the audio just got a lot worse, or maybe it's just really bad at the moment because for some reason the microphone here is not recording. So that's really good. Uh, sorry about that. So here we are. This is it, the photo. Uh, it isn't just a landscape. It is. So this isn't a landscape. It's got a model in the photo, but we're going to try our best. Uh, that's why I wanted to spend more time on deconstructing the photo because I'm not sure how well this edit's going to turn out. But we can only hope. So, first things first, we do need to brighten up this image because you can't actually see any of the foreground because it's so dark. So we're going to we're gonna come to the shadows and boost up the shadows to about plus 90, plus 100, something like that. Enough that we can actually see the foreground, but we don't want to make it too bright because we want to keep the images quite dark. Then we're going to get the highlights, and I'm going to drop the highlights, not down to minus 100 because that's going to look really weird and flat, but maybe minus 10, minus 20. The numbers that I'm choosing don't matter too much because your photos will be very different, but the ideas are the same. Um, now, we're gonna add some more contrast to the photo. Here's a contrasty photo. So I'm gonna add about plus 70 because I think that's gonna look fairly similar to his and it works for this photo, I think. Um, but obviously you do what works best for your photo. Now, best thing to do now is work on the temperature and the tint. And I'm just trying to work out, I'm just trying to work out the best thing to do. Definitely, we're gonna to want to add some teal, sorry, uh, some magenta. So we're gonna slide up the magenta slider a bit. I don't wanna go too far for it to look weird, but he definitely does have some pinks in that photo. So let's start with like plus 10. So if I go too far, it's gonna look a bit strange. So maybe, let's start with plus 25, 20, and we can always come back and adjust it. Um, then the temperature he makes a little bit warmer. It doesn't want to be too cold because it's a sunset photo. So trying to work out the best place I'm reckoning around there. Because I want to keep some of the blues in the image because he has obviously those teals in the skies. So we may come back and drop that temperature again. But for the time being, that will do. Uh, like I said, I'm going to drop the clarity because he has got very soft images. So minus 30 I think is a good place to start. And the best part of the basics panel is you can just come back to it and just adjust it. Now we're going to leave the vibrance and saturation uh, for the time being and come back to the tone curve. Tone curve could be quite interesting, so I'm going to leave that to the end. If you want to know what we're going to do with the tone curve, it could entirely change the image. Stay until the end. I'm going to do that in a bit. Now first things first are the colours. So we want to have, um, you can see here, we're going to work on the sky first and try and get the clouds to look similar to this. Now he's got better clouds in his photos. The light is reflecting through the clouds more than here. You've just kind of got a very soft sunset. So his sunset's better, but we can try our best to get the colours. Now, we won't want to take it to the right because we're going to get those kind of greens going on, but we're going to want to get the um, more pink side of the reds in, so we're going to drop the red side at all the, almost all the way to the left. There's not much red in this image, so it doesn't matter too much for me. You do what works best. Now, for the oranges, you can see if I drag too far, you're just going to get like a bright pink sky, or to the right, you're going to get bright green. So we want a nice sort of central part between orange and that pink. So I'm thinking minus 15 is probably enough there. We can always boost the saturation in the oranges just to kind of see what we're going to be getting. So maybe plus 10 in the saturation there just to kind of really boost the color there. Now for the yellows, we're probably going to boost the yellows to the right because if I go to the left, you see it makes it pink. If I go to the right, it makes it more yellow. Um, and I want to have those kind of that kind of yellowy pink there. Now, because of all the other colours I've made more pink, the yellow I'm going to try and make more to the other side because then the colours kind of bleed through onto each other and I don't want to lose the yellows from the image. Now, I think that's probably the best of the sunset. I think that's looking fairly close. If anything, it probably needs a little bit more pink in there, but it's a little bit hard to get that at the moment. 
Um, next thing are the greens. Now, his images don't tend to have much green in there. He tends to desaturate the greens and take out the greens and make them more brown. Now, I am red-green colorblind, so they look really brown to me, but I'm pretty sure he takes out a lot of the greens in the image. Um, if you look through most of his images, there's not much green in there. So we're going to get the green side, and to do that, if I go to the right, you see, well, it's hard to see because it's not very bright. Let's just brighten it up for you, just so you can see. So if you drag the greens to the right, you get that very sort of nice bluey bright green but we don't want that so we can drag it basically all the way to the left to make it very brown um, the other thing you could think about doing is doing the same with the yellows and it does make the green darker here or brown here but i mean ideally that's the color we want but we also want the sky to be that sort of more yellow color so i think that's probably all right for the greens and we're going to work on that by desaturating the greens as well now for the aquas and blues i'm going to drop the aquas down to about minus 70 minus 80 there aren't many aquas in this image and the blues I'm going to take down to minus 70 again. Um, and you can see here we've got this weird sort of breaking up of colours going on. And I think that's because of the colour temperature earlier. So we'll come back and sort that out in a minute. But that's to try and get these teals in the image. Don't go too far because you can very easily make your whole image this kind of colour. And it can look quite strange. So we're going to come up to the basics panel and try and sort that out now. Drop in a tiny bit more blue there. I think that'll do. Uh, maybe take off the teals a little bit more in the blue. Okay, so that's really a good start to the whole image. Now the saturation part. This is really kind of the fun part because he has very saturated images. And that's what we're going to do it here. So obviously we've increased the saturation in the oranges there. We're going to do the same for the reds. Um, I don't want to go too far because you get those weird look in the sky. So plus 15 probably be okay. Yellows, fairly high, plus 70 because if you go too bright, it's going to look very strange. But because the yellows are very bright in this image, you're beginning to get this kind of colour here, which is what I'm aiming for at the moment in this part of the image here. And for the greens, we're going to desaturate the greens to about minus 50. Uh, I don't want to go too far to the right because his greens are very desaturated and also very dark. So we're going to drop the saturation of the greens to minus 50. As for the blues, well, the aquas, I'm going to take the aquas down to minus 70. Um, and then the blues, yeah, the blues, I'm actually going to increase the saturation a bit. Now, when you're working with blues, it can be quite... Con um, it can be too much because most images have a lot of blue in them. So take the saturation down in aquas, put the saturation up in blues or vice versa. I don't tend to do the same for both, like increase saturation or decrease saturation for both. Otherwise, the image can look crazy blue and it can kind of be too much for the eyes. So we're going to start with that. Then for the purples and magentas, I'm going to try and put some more uh, purples in the sky. We're going to get those really cool purples in the sunsets, kind of similar to what he's got going on here. Finally is the luminance side, and that's just the brightness of each colour. His images, again, are quite dark, but I don't really want to spend too much time adjusting, yeah, because you're going to get like weird effects going on with the colours. So I'm actually going to brighten up the oranges a bit, because I think those colours are a little bit too much. So if I brighten them up, it kind of takes out some of the colours a little bit. As for the yellows, again, brighten up the yellows, because if you look here, this is kind of like the yellow part of this guy. He really brightens it up. And one thing we're going to do in a bit is we're going to add kind of a bit of a flare coming from there as well, if we get around to it. Again, I'm sorry this video is going to be so long, but it's been a long time since I've filmed, and I wanted to put a load of value into it. So, same for the blues. I'm going to drop the uh, luminance in the blues by quite a bit, because what I'm trying to do is get this sort of dark blue fading into this all right kind of fairly dark blue there. So... Dropping the blues like that, and we're going to do that with the gradient slider in just a bit. And then for the purples and magentas, drop the purples a bit, probably leave the magentas as is up there. Okay, so that's probably the sky done. Now you probably can see that the uh, the foreground is a little bit too dark, but we'll work on that in a bit. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is take out a bit of saturation in the purples and magentas because it's a bit too much, I think. Okay, right, split toning. This is going to be the fun part. Now, if you don't know how to use split toning, press Option or Alt on your keyboard and drag this slider along here. And you can really begin to see the colours you can put into the highlights. So I'm either going to go for like pinks or teals. So let's start off with this colour here, plus three, four, three. And slowly add in some saturation just to kind of see what effect we get here. Because I'm trying to get this colour here. In fact, I might want to add, actually add some orange. Kind of like a pinky orange is where we're trying to get. I think that's the closest we're going to get at the moment with the sky. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it does help. Same with the shadows. Increase the saturation a bit and then just slide through and see what we're going to get. For the shadows, we're probably looking for sort of bluey pinks, maybe a bit of oranges. 
like there maybe just trying to work out what his shadows are the best way to work out what his shadows are is just look at the dark part of his image and try and work out what color so i think it's kind of like a sort of greeny brown yeah i think that'll be okay i mean i'm struggling with the greens at the moment so i think that's the best we can get with the split toning right so we're going to move on to uh, detail add a little bit of noise reduction just to kind of smooth out the whole image a bit because he's got very soft images uh, and then you can add in a little bit of vignetting to try and get this effect that he's got this kind of darker around the edges which might help so we'll do that a little bit of vignetting but not too much camera calibration this could be quite fun because if we drag this to the right and this to the left this is where you start to get the teal and orange which you can see is slightly what he's got but it's not quite so put that back there and then you can begin to get these teal and pinks which is again slightly what he's got but not quite so he's got these teal skies and mild pink orange undertones in the skies so i'm probably going to add a tiny bit there and maybe take off a little bit of the blues. I don't want to go too far, I don't want to overdo it, but if I turn it off and on again, it kind of helps a little bit. So that is the before and the after. So you can see we've come quite far from the original um, and it would probably fit fairly well with this feed at the moment. Again, it's not perfect, but we're gonna try a couple of other things. So come onto this tool here, drag it out over the um, where the sun is. I'm gonna come down to invert um, and it's brightened up already. So brighten up there, we're gonna try and boost the highlights a bit to try and get that boost in the sun like he's got here and then we need to add that kind of hazy look so come on to um, dehaze and if I drag it to the left or the right you can see what it's going to do so drag it to the left and it makes it ever so slightly more hazy um, and I'm going to probably want to take out some of the highlights while doing this and it's just messing around really and truthfully you want to be doing this in Photoshop it's the best place to do it yeah dehaze isn't going to really work um, Okay, so we're going to try that, see how that does, and then maybe add a little bit of orange to it and a little bit of magenta, just to kind of boost those colours a little bit. And then you can always move it around if you want to, put it up here a bit more. I don't want it landing on the uh, woman's skin too much. So that's that. Next thing to do is we're going to get the gradient slider, and we're going to be trying to darken up the skies at the top here. So double click effect just to reset everything. We're going to get the highlights, drop the highlights down to well, maybe not minus 100, but minus. 50 minus 60 would be good and then the shadows as well boost the saturation a bit boost the contrast no actually don't want to boost the contrast it's not going to help um, and I'm thinking dropping the temperature a bit yeah because then we're going to get that slightly more different blue going on that he's got here so you can see we're beginning to get a very similar color in the top right that he's got we're beginning to get a very similar skies granted his skies a little bit more orange but he's got better clouds to work with and then it's just the foreground now our foreground is quite different to his his is the greens i think it's taken away from the image so again we're going to get a gradient slider move it up like this drop this down here um, double click to reset we're going to do the same thing again really drop the highlights drop the shadows just to kind of darken off the bottom of the image because that's leading our eyes towards the center a bit more um, we're then going to boost up the temperature, warm it up at the bottom a bit, add a tiny bit of magenta maybe, not too much, um, and begin, I think I might desaturate it a bit. Bit of desaturation in there, you could add a bit of dehazing, which would kind of bring out some of the colours there. Drop the clarity, and there we have it. I think that is basically as close as we're going to get to his colour grade. One thing that I would think would be cool to do is take this into Photoshop and use our star brushes to brush in just a couple of stars here, put a little bit of um, outer glow on the stars and you can get some really cool star effects. Alternatively you could potentially put in a Milky Way there which would kind of fit quite well with the theme. But that is the colour grade, I'll just show you the before and the after. It's quite a cool colour grade, I'm quite impressed with how that's turned out. I think that it's very close to what he's got. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Let me know if you want to see any more videos like this. Again, I'm very sorry if this video has been very long. Very sorry about the audio, I hope you can hear me. Um, I'd rather not film the whole thing again if I can help it. But yeah, we will see you in the next video. We're going to be doing a how to edit like Benjamin Hardman. Um, and then we're going to be doing some more like business stuff as well. So if you want to see some videos like that, comment down below. We will see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.